All right, what is up guys? Coach Joe here at the Lion's Den. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the basics when it comes to getting ready for your summer cut. So let's get to it. So here we are right now, it's about the end of March, okay? So when we think about our timeline here, uh, we have April, May, June, about 12 weeks to really dial it in if you guys are looking to get cut, shredded up, and uh, basically just look your best for summertime. Uh, so right now I'm actually doing a cut. I started off at 278 pounds, which is probably the heaviest I've ever been for that uh, duration of time. And right now I'm about 259 pounds. So I kind of want to document uh, some of the tips and basics and principles here that have really helped me get my weight to where it is uh, and also hold on to as much strength and muscle as possible. And if you guys are looking forward to this summer to do the same thing, you're really going to want to get your pen and paper and dial it in for these tips that we're going to cover right now. So right off the bat, guys, I want to talk about uh, the first one. And I know this may seem pretty obvious, uh, but that is have a goal. <laughs> uh, I know it's like the most obvious point here, but a lot of people uh, just always say that they want to get straight up for summer where they're going to uh, master in the winter time and summer's going to be here before you know it. So if we don't have a goal on paper and a plan ready to uh, execute, this is never going to happen guys. So I want you guys right now, if you have your pen and paper to write your goal. Okay. And, and that goal can be, I want to get shredded up by whatever date. Okay. I would recommend you guys have at least, uh, eight to 12 weeks to execute this so that we can do it as optimally as possible. And then be very specific with your goal. Okay. How much weight do you want to lose? If there are muscle parts that you are trying to bring out the most or that you need to put more effort and work into, right? Put that down as well, okay? And kind of maybe have um, just a, an image in your head of where you're trying to get to. Do you want to be as shredded up, like bodybuilding stage ready? Or do you just want to look good, lose you know five or six pounds? Well, we, the more specific we can be, the better. So having the goal down on paper and for you to visualize and start manifesting and, and making your actions around this goal is going to be the first uh, tip that I'm going to give to you guys. All right, so number two is going to be track slash deficit okay so whenever it comes to any weight loss weight gain maintenance nutrition whatever you want to call it the biggest thing that we have to make sure we understand is where are our calories for each of those levels okay what are the calories that we have to hit to maintain our weight what are our calories we need to be at to add size and strength what are the calories that we need to be in to lose weight right or be in a deficit and oftentimes I just see people mindlessly eating and just getting on the scale over and over and over again. And when I ask them, okay, well, where are your calories at? They really have no idea. And maybe they see some progress for a few days and then they see a rebound where their weight goes up or it's not changing and fluctuating the way that we want it to. So we really have to make sure that we're tracking our food. I recommend any app that works best for you, okay? I use Chronometer, uh, but if you guys like MyFitnessPal, use MyFitnessPal, there's tons of other ones out there. You guys find what works best for you. If you wanna put down in the comment section uh, other apps that you find really help you when you're tracking your nutrition, please, by all means, put them down there so people can uh, use those resources to their benefit. But I, when I'm tracking, uh, just to get an average baseline for me, I like to track uh, four to five days, okay? And that's just tracking everything I eat, my calories, you know, where uh, I need to be in order to maintain, or if I'm losing weight, kind of where those calories are at, and then I go from there. So for me, say my maintenance is gonna be 4,000 calories. So 4,000 calories keeps me at my current weight. Well, if I wanna add weight, I like to increase that by 500 calories, and if I want to lose weight, I'll decrease that by 500 calories. So typically 500 calories is a sweet spot. We're able to see the progress and the weight change go down, uh, but it's not gonna put us in too severe of a calorie deficit where we're getting like, you know, the, the stomach uh, grumblies and we're just kind of like in a really bad position and we're probably gonna rebound because it just sucks, okay? I don't want this to be a really crappy experience for you, although when we push really hard, maybe towards the end, yeah, it's, it's not gonna be as comfortable as you'd like it to be, but starting off, we're trying to go for compliance here, okay? So when it comes to the cut, because that's what we're talking about, I would like to subtract uh, maintenance by 500 
calories, okay? Uh, and typically those calories can come from uh, carbohydrates or fats because we wanna keep the protein as high as we can uh, just to be preserving our muscle, all right? So for you guys paying attention here, right? Track yourself and then get yourself into some sort of deficit. And the easiest way shown by the research is just gonna be to reduce that by calories rather than increasing uh, activity level by tons and tons of cardio. Uh, but we're gonna get there in a second with the next tip. All right, guys, so the third one is just gonna be that we're gonna increase our NEAT or just our overall general activity level, okay? Um, so this is a big one for me, and the way that I increase my need or just the calories that I'm burning throughout the day uh, outside of my training sessions is gonna be by getting my steps in. So there's this philosophy back in the day that you guys had to do these grueling hard cardio sessions by getting on the treadmill or the Stairmaster, right? And you see guys who do it fasted, non-fasted, uh, but they would just be in their hoodies and, and it's typically bodybuilders and they're just like pushing the cardio like crazy. Um, but what we found that has developed better looking physiques and just been a lot easier on the body has just been by increasing need, okay? So that's just our energy uh, expenditure throughout the day and the best form that I can tell you guys from my personal experience on uh, the people that I've worked for or worked with, and that's a lot of uh, clients anecdotally, has just been increasing their step count. So figure out where your average steps are and all you gotta do is just go on Amazon or buy whatever step tracker, I think your phone at this point does it, and you can see where your average steps are on a daily level. From there, uh, I would increase that by 20 to 30%. Okay, so super easy. If you're getting 10,000 steps a day, 20 to 30%, it's gonna be two to 3,000 steps that you're going to increase that by. Um, so just doing that alone uh, will help put you in a further deficit. And what's nice about doing these walks, um, and typically I like to do them after each meal. Um, you know, you just do like a 10 minute walk after each meal. It's gonna one, help with digestion. Uh, two, it could help you know, up here mentally, which I'm a big advocate of mental health. Uh, and then three, it's not gonna make you super hungry and wanna eat more calories. So I know when I was doing a lot of intense cardio and pushing really hard, getting this crazy you know, spike in my heart rate, burning tons of calories, what was happening is I would actually end up eating more food later on because of how hungry I was, or I wouldn't be compliant because uh, over time, I was just so hungry, if that makes sense. So for you guys, I really recommend um, by just getting these walks in. Like I said, you can do a 10 minute walk after every meal. You can do a walk in the morning, a walk at night, walk your dog, play with your kids, whatever it is. Um, but just getting some extra steps in. And this is like a nice, easy walk, okay? I'm not telling you to jog. Uh, I'm not telling you to be, you know, power walk McGee with like the arms swinging, ankle weights or anything like that. This is just put on a podcast or find something you like to listen to and just go for a stroll. You know, it's, it, when it's a nice day out, it makes it super easy, uh, but this is gonna make it uh, just a far more effective and optimal way for you guys to get and stay in that caloric deficit, which is gonna help over time lose weight. And it's just, uh, it's just good for your, your mental health and your heart health in general, just overall tons of benefits from walking and getting your steps in. Now the fourth tip when it comes to your summer cut is gonna be a high protein intake. All right, so when we are in a caloric deficit and we're cutting, one of the biggest things we wanna do is preserve as much muscle as we possibly can. Okay, so what is the building block for muscle? Okay, it's gonna be protein. So if you guys are trying to hold on to as much muscle or you guys are, um, trying to hold on as much strength as possible. We wanna keep our protein intake as high as we can uh, or in, re in a relatively high range so that we're able to hold on to that as we're in that deficit. So I typically like to stay, let's just say for general guidelines, 0.7 to one gram per LB of body weight, okay? So me being uh, right now about 259 pounds, I would just round that to 260. I'm trying to get in 260 grams of protein a day, um, and then minimally be 0.7. Now, for me, I'm gonna stay with that one gram. You guys can do whatever you want, but I would say if you're in that range, you're gonna be good. The higher on that spectrum, I just think you're gonna be safer. 
Uh, and then say you're somebody who maybe has a lot of weight to lose, okay? So you're, you're a bit uh, heavier. I would say um, going on the 0.7 is gonna be fine, okay? Because uh, we just don't wanna be also getting too many calories in, right? So this will just be my range, you know, just for reference there, 0.7 to one gram. Uh, should have started off by saying I'm not a nutritionist, I'm not a doctor, consult with your doctor, all that, yada, yada, yada. This is for educational purposes. But this is kind of the range that I would like to be in uh, when I'm tracking my protein and just getting that in throughout the day, okay? We, we've kind of uh, got rid of the myth about the anabolic window. As long as we have uh, that protein getting in our body within that 24 hours, you know, that's a win for us, okay? So when it comes to protein, the other thing that I kind of switched to is gonna be uh, high protein, low fat, low carb sources. So protein shakes are gonna be awesome, especially if you're somebody who's busy and you have a crazy schedule, you can get in your protein supplement. Hopefully you're using HD protein, shameless plug for HD muscle. Um, but if not, I like doing chicken, I like doing whitefish, tilapia, uh, and then if I'm doing red meat, I try to stick to the highest uh, protein with minimal fat as possible when it comes to red meat. So you're gonna have your, your sirloins uh, or your ground beef that's like 97.3, which is kind of hard to find. But if you can get it, I would just take as much of that as possible. Um, and then just your your other sources of protein could be coming from dairy. So you're doing like your, your skier or uh, your Greek yogurt and keeping the fat uh, to zero or to as low as possible, um, just so that we're getting as much protein as possible. So that's kind of uh, where I want to just keep it with that. But as long as you're getting a high protein intake, and I know some of you guys are just kind of going over the basics here. Uh, so, you know, just when you're looking at your macros and your calories, just try to stick within that range for your protein intake and keep it to the highest quality sources as possible. Um, and if you're on a budget, just do the best you can with what you got. Okay, so our last one is gonna be about training. And that's gonna be high volume. Okay, so it's been proven uh, through the, the scientific uh, evidence that higher volume training is gonna be more beneficial uh, to preserving muscle and potentially even growing muscle uh, when we're in a calorie deficit or uh, some sort of weight loss phase. So what that basically means is hypertrophy training or bodybuilding style training is gonna be the most optimal uh, when we are in a deficit. So for me, uh, with my goals that I have right now, I've been doing a lot of higher volume training because as I'm cutting, I'm trying to keep as much muscle mass as possible and the higher volume is what's gonna allow me to do that. So when you guys are structuring your training schedules and you're looking at, okay, uh, how are we gonna systematize this for the year or periodize this for the year and you don't have any competitions that require you to have uh, certain strength feats or anything like that during the summer, it, it'd be a great time for you guys to be hopping on some hypertrophy training um, and some higher volume training. And, and we actually have a lot of hypertrophy training and hypertrophy uh, programs on zastrength.net. So if you don't want any thinking, you wanna purchase a hypertrophy program, I would go to zastrength.net and buy it. Uh, but if not, any other program is fine. That's just gonna have those higher volume uh, markers uh, basically staying, I would say, uh, in that, that six, to 12 rep range. I know that's kind of uh, a range that's always talked about. Yes, obviously we can go higher, we can go to 20 or 30 reps if we wanted to, but at that point, um, it just is kind of a little bit too taxing on our cardiovascular system. And we get the same benefits by staying in that six to 12 rep range anyway, so why wouldn't we? Uh, so as long as you're kind of in that rep range and you're pushing hard and uh, getting enough volume to preserve your muscle or maybe potentially grow some muscle tissue, that is where we're gonna be. So. That's kind of just a really basic video, but I wanted to just get it out there for you guys, whoever's looking forward to getting cut or shredded up for the summer. These are gonna be your five really basic uh, points that you can stick to as foundational principles to help you get shredded up and cut up for summer. Uh, but as always, guys, we have programs, we have articles, all this good stuff on zastrength.net, so I highly recommend you go over there and you check it out. And uh, I always appreciate your guys' support, so stay a lean, mean, strength machine. Let's get shredded up. Peace.